Well, shalom, everyone. My name is Aaron. I'm the appointed director of CMJ UK. I am currently in Jerusalem uh, here celebrating Hanukkah. We're about to have Hanukkah, a beautiful holiday, eight days long, uh, a holiday that the kids really love of dreidels, of chocolates, of heroes, of, of, of donuts, and for the adults, really bad traffic. Uh, a lot of gift giving. It's sometimes called the Jewish Christmas which it's not, but it's sometimes the, the spirit and happiness that this season uh, brings is, is, is often described as the Jewish Christmas. Uh, Hanukkah as a festival is an excellent challenge for both the Jewish world and the Christian world. What do I mean by that? Well, the challenge is this. We're going to celebrate a holiday that's not in the Bible. Wait a second, Aaron, I hear you say. But it is in the New Testament. It says in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 22, that Jesus is in Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And that's all it says. Based on that single verse, because Hanukkah is not mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, based on that single verse in the New Testament, what can we say about the Feast of Dedication? Because that's actually what the word Hanukkah means. Um, nothing. No, absolutely nothing. To understand the story of Hanukkah, both the Jewish people and the uh, Gentile Christian community need to go to the source, the Apocrypha. What is the Apocrypha? I hear you ask. Well, this is a collection of writings. There are other collections, the Pseudodepigrapha. These are, are, are writings, Jewish writings, that, that occur in between the Testaments. So in between the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, Greek Bible, there's 400 or so years, too often falsely called the silent years. But they are anything but silent. In fact, more books and material is written during this period than both the Hebrew Bible and New Testament put together. And it's in that time period, 100 years prior to Jesus, some incredible events occurred that were recorded, were thought through, and were written down. And a lot of the theology that is appearing in the Second Temple period in the Apocrypha is the basis of the New Testament. The Apocrypha serves as a bridge. So this is a bridge between the Testaments, um, getting us from one point to an, another in the, and, and preparing us for the advent uh, of the Messiah. Um, so it's probably no coincidence that Hanukkah is also appearing around the season of Advent as well. So what is this story of Hanukkah? Well, it's a war festival. So unlike some of the other festivals where Passover is a festival of redemption, and Shavuot Pentecost is a festival of the giving of the Torah and of the giving of the Spirit. And Tabernacles is a festival of, of living with God, having him dwell with us and reminding ourselves of the wilderness journey. Hanukkah is the celebration of victory from a, uh, a Hasminian family, a family of priests who led a rebellion uh, against the idolatrous Greek Empire, the Seleucid Empire, and achieved victory, improbable as it was. There were, it's a story of heroes, a story of suffering, a story of martyrdom. It's got angels in it, prayers, and ultimately victory with the, the dedication of the temple. What's not mentioned in the story, okay, and there are four books of Maccabees, what's not mentioned in the, in the, in the literal text, what's not mentioned in the Jewish prayer book for Hanukkah, what's not mentioned in the Midrash and the, and the Mishnah on Hanukkah, it's the miracle of the oil. That tradition, I'm, I'm afraid to say, comes very, very late. People are trying to, to put miracles into the story when there's no need to do that. The miracle is that God continues to guard his people. Uh, what's going to be interesting is we're going to be celebrating this festival uh, during the time of war, when Israel is at war with Hamas. And, and how are we going to reflect on some of the themes that we see in the story of Hanukkah of, of Jewish people who would refuse to accept the culture of the day and to worship idols and instead 
uh, would suffer martyrdom. And yet it was the blood of the righteous which brought on the redemption. And that theology is, is right there in the New Testament. It also answers uh, or gives a challenge to some of the the uh, theology that 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 uh, we have with the patriarchs. What do I mean? I mean, the patriarchs, they obey the Torah and they are blessed. They are rewarded. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they have families. They expand. They get, get to bless the world. David gets a kingdom with Solomon, gets wisdom. Uh, so obedience is a good thing. It gives you rewards and blessings. And yet in real life, Obeying God often brings us trouble and strife and sufferings. How do we deal with that theologically? That's what you see in the Second Temple period, uh, where people are are suffering for the sake of heaven, and uh, sometimes even to death, and yet that brings on the redemption. And that's actually what you see in the New Testament, is it not? Suffering produces perseverance, character, and hope. And uh, so, so Paul is resting on the basis of the Maccabean, Maccabean martyrdom and uh, where people were thinking, if I suffer for God, what, what happens to me? Why, why, is this, why, do, why do bad things happen to good people and, and, and vice versa? And so it is the death of the righteous that brings on redemption and how much more, kal in, in Hebrew, how much more is the death of the most righteous Messiah to bring on redemption? the redemption so i think I, I i challenge everyone read the stories of the maccabees don't just listen to all of the 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 hype get to the real kernel and uh, and see this is a, cel- a, a a story that was celebrated by jesus how we don't know we have no idea what he did he probably didn't uh, have the donuts like we we have today but uh but he celebrated uh, uh, the festival of, of dedication of the temple, the house of God. And that's incredibly important uh, to Jesus and therefore should be important to us. Brothers and sisters, have a happy Hanukkah. I look forward to seeing you in England sometime soon. Shalom from Jerusalem.